What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode one of Champs Chats. I'm Chris Chavez, joined here with Kyle Merber, Dana Giordano, Caitlin Hutchison, and Jasmine Todd. The Sidious Mag crew has touched down in Eugene, Oregon, and we're ready for the next four days of track and field action. Kyle, how are you feeling? Is it Champs Chats? <laughs> Champ Chat? Is there an apostrophe S? What is the breakdown here? We'll have this figured out by the end of the uh the end of the championships overall we got to workshop the name yeah, okay. before worlds well it's good to be back i feel like uh a four day long weekend of non-stop track and field action it's just what we love it's perfect so let's kind of kick things off with everyone else giving a you know their feel for how eugene has treated them so far and we'll we'll start with the rookie of the of the team caitlin this is your first time in eugene First day you got to see Hayward Field. So let's let's start there. First impressions. First impressions. I think that Eugene hates me, uh, mainly because I have fractured my foot with only being here for less than 48 hours. Um, so there's that. But besides the fact that I got a big old clunky boot on my foot, the stadium was awesome. But it's really messing up my allergies. Like right now I'm about to cough into this mic, yes. and you guys are going to think I'm crazy. <laughs> Pollen count is high. It seems like everyone had some issues yesterday, but now we, we, we're like a pharmacy back there. Pollen count is high. The vibes are higher. Dana, take us through the vibes in the stadium today because you got to uh, record a lot of Instagram stories. You got a couple interviews. So what was the, the feel like among the fans? I feel like the athletes were ready. The fans, they got to bring the heat a little bit more in the next couple of days. So we're building up momentum. The prelims are always a little bit, you know, you want to see the action. So I think we're, every day we're going to see more and more people in that stadium. Would have liked to see a little bit more, but you know what? The athletes, they showed up. Jasmine, speaking of the athletes, how did it feel? How did it feel? I guess was the clap better this year from the fans? Because last year was like a struggle, right? Or the rhythm is always off in Eugene. The rhythm is always off in Eugene. <laughs> you have to expect it. You Sometimes you just got to start them over and then guide them the right way. But they get there. I honestly think that they can do better with the clap. I think it was better than last year, but I know they have a lot more clap in them. So <laughs> hopefully where's, they bring it. Where's the best clap you've ever competed at? Old Hayward. Old Hayward. No yes. way. Yes. It's the 100%. same fans. Same fans. I don't know if maybe it's just because it is a bigger stadium, but old Hayward Magic, they they brought the magic for mm. sure. I like that you're still in your kit. Still in it and can't wait to shower. <laughs> <laughs> to it's been it's been a couple of hours, I guess, since since the, the meet, but vibes are still high. Yeah. Well, I got in, I spent uh I got in at two AM to Seattle, obviously missed my layover, spent a few hours in a Motel Six. How was that? This podcast isn't sponsored by Motel Six, so go ahead. But honestly, not that bad. Oh, I feel okay, it was my first time in a Motel Six. I feel like it's a bad rap. It wasn't terrible. Okay. But uh, happy to be here. And then, you know, we were in the mix zone today. I feel like Sidious Mag. We really brought an operation this year. A unit. Like we have, we're starting to figure things out how to properly cover track meets. We should have it down pat, I think, by the World Championships. But we have a whole squad. We've got. Someone in the stands. We've got three people in the mix zone. Mac is in the stands. So two people in the stands. Two photographers out there. We're trying to bring you guys the best coverage. I think following us on Twitter is definitely one of the places where because we've got someone, David Melly, shout out to him, doing live updates remotely. Not in Eugene, sadly. But Caitlin, you and me tweeting out videos from the mix zone. Uh, today Jasmine was competing. We'll have her in the mix zone and in the stadium uh, tomorrow. Dana was in the stadium getting kind of athlete reactions, fan reactions. Mac was also in the stadium kind of just putting out fires for us uh, and making sure that things were properly titled and all that stuff. So it's 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 working. The wheels are clicking here at Sidious Mag. Well, today, I mean, is nonstop with the, the prelims, you know, Back to back to back. I feel like it's not necessarily made for TV. The presentation mm -hmm. it's made for qualifying. It's not even. It wasn't made for TV for today. It was on. It was, it was made for streaming. <laughs> um, and so it is just nonstop action. And you know, from our perspective, 
trying to get interviews, you're finishing up one interview and the next race is already going off or finishing. But I literally had to text you and be like, Kyle, I need backup. Kyle, yeah. I need backup. And you were just out there just getting scoops because we're going to bring you a little bit of insight mm -hmm. in some some news that we kind of reported out uh, on our own in the in the mix zone and outside of the mix zone. Too. Well, well, let's get into it. Race the clock. He eased up with about 10 meters to go and but still sort of like knew where his spot was going to be. And so he. He kind of let Donovan have it this time around. But when we spoke to him afterwards, it was a very typical Cade Flat interview where it was just like it had quotes here and there. He's like, I'm a high schooler. I'm not supposed to be here. So worst case scenario is I go home as a high schooler. Best case scenario, I get to compete against the best in the world and show them what Cade Flat can do. Yeah. And then, you know, also in that heat, he did beat Isaiah Jewett, who, who someone who made the Olympics, who made the year. Olympic team. So, uh, you know, mixed up well. We had five out of that heat. It was eight days ago, and as soon as he said, we took an extra step back in the mix up. <laughs> he did go for a high five after. I, I think I was like, I'd prefer a pound. I feel like <laughs> germs. You know, that's too quick of uh, a pump. But yeah, well, but he's it, for for the record, he's in the clear. Like he tested a couple times in, in the last allegedly, couple days, and, <laughs> allegedly, and he's fine and. I mean, it, he had a solid showing second to Derek uh, Holdsworth, who ran 147.14, got the auto qualifier. And the guy who got the third auto qualifier in that one is Olympic bronze medalist Clayton Murphy. So he he looked pretty solid out there. I'd sort of like he comes into a championship, uh, championship and knows how to navigate the rounds. And so may not get the win, but enough to get the job done and survive in advance. Well, Dana, you saw him uh, cross the finish line and you, you had some words on that. Yeah, he didn't just... He never stopped. He just said that tunnel move. And I'm sure he had it in his head because if you've watched any Clayton's YouTube videos, it kind of feels like he knows what he wants to do after the race, before the race. So I could just see in his eyes, he's like, I'm going to do the thing where I cross the finish line and keep running into the tunnel, look at no one, go through. And then 30 seconds later, Kate Flat does the same thing. So I'm seeing a couple parallels here between the two of them. Alpha move. Alpha moves. Yeah. So Clayton looked good. Um, you know, I think the the theme of the 800 on the men's side was that for the most part, all the favorites got through. Like everyone who, being, you know, he's doing his post race interviews and whatnot. And so he was in the fourth heat, and in the first heat of the women's race, perfect transition, Kyle was was a thing, and he was not concerned at all. He didn't even have to really watch. He saw her go out in like 58, and he's like, Nah, my girl's got it. Yeah, and she did. Ran 201.24 uh, to win her section. Nia Aikens right behind her, 201.40. Brooke Feldmeyer, 201.45. Hannah Green, they all qualified out of that first heat. In the second heat, Sage Herta really stood out to me because, and I spoke with her after the race, she ended up running two flat 86 and uh, beat Raven Rogers in that one. And Sabrina Sutherland, Anna Camp Bennett also comes out with a, with a qualifier in that one. But I asked Sage sort of because she's been on this streak of PR after PR in the 800 and gotten into some Diamond League races. I said, well, you beat Raven Rogers. I think Mo runs in the heat before you. Aji Wilson's on the track as we speak. These are the three Olympians from last year. Two of them have Olympic medals. Aji has the world indoor title. Like, How do you you know, mentally put yourself in it that you believe you're in contention to take one of those three spots? Because this isn't one of them, well, one of the events where you know we have a world champion, which is kind of crazy to think about. Well, th so the a couple things. First off, I feel like the Olympic champ should be the one getting the bye. Yeah. We're all world. We all watch the Olympics. Like, it was so long ago. It was so long ago. In 2019, pre, you know, I was so much opinion, better. It didn't even happen. Be, the, I think the, Mo was still in high school. <laughs> the crazy part is about the, the 2019 World Championships uh, being kind of like playing a factor here is it gets said all the time we're closer to the 2024 olympics than we are to the 2019 world Championship. that gets said all the time it says all the time <laughs> I, I, I wake up i flip my calendar and i'm like oh my god we are getting closer to 2024 okay well but i tweeted today how would you feel if you're racing against raven rogers on her home turf when she's on the tower yeah and then it's someone flipped it back on me and said 
how do you feel if you're Raven Rogers, knowing that you're on the tower and still competing? Yeah, it's and a little pressure. imposing. When we, I mean, we brought it up to Keely Hodgkinson when we were we saw her at the pre-classic, and she was like, "Yeah, I mean, it is kind of weird that you know I'm looking at her every yeah. single time." On I the feel turn. like presidents don't get on Mount Rushmore until they die, right? Like we're not throwing it up in the middle of their first term. That's yeah. some new Hayward energy, and I like, <laughs> and I'm here for it. So to finish my thought on Sage, he said that you no, know, it really was the Diamond Leagues that. Uh, uh, have really helped her kind of get the confidence to know, hey, you know, I can crack this top three. Today she did it. Now let's see kind of what she does uh, in the next round. Yeah, so. she did it evenly from the front. Actually, I think technically a, a very slight negative split. And so, you know, the OAC is running fantastic. Although I do have, a, I take slight issue when we say like, oh, she beat Raven. No, and It's right. like in no, the first Raven round when it. there's three spots or grab, it's like, I mean, you finished ahead, but right. like wins count only, only in finals. Yeah. yeah, unless that's like unless you're the the cliff between no. qualifying and not. Fair then enough. I'll count it. Yeah. The other one is so then the fastest time of the day was Ajay Wilson two flat thirty seven. Olivia Baker right behind her two hundred one. Charlene Lipsy also snags an auto qualifier. I saw you were looking at her results and like her Instagram page re- uh, like while she was coming through the mix zone because it's been, it been a while. It's been a while. I mean, we forget how good Charlene Lipsy was in 2017. You know, she was a, a world championship finalist and, you know, she had a solid year in 2018, but since then has really been struggling with a lot of injuries. And I feel like someone at her age, when you have back to back to back seasons that maybe don't go your way, a lot of people throw it in. And she has not, and I think it's really cool to see. Again, hometown Long Island bias here, so I'm rooting hard for her. But, uh, yeah. Well, are you Pump. rooting hard, harder for her than you are for your beloved Atlanta Track <laughs> yeah. Club? Because they put two into the next round with Allie Wilson and Olivia Baker. Uh, unfortunately, Sadie Henderson didn't advance, but it, you've, you've been not shy whatsoever of showing your, your red and white uh, uh, Atlanta Track Club fan. Yeah, well, uh, so... You know, obviously we're here with Adidas this weekend, so I can really rep Atlanta proud. I did get some peach tree special shoes ahead of the 4th of July race. But my thing and my take, and I'd be interested to hear what everyone else thinks of this. Like, I think we need to be more vocal about who your favorite team is. It's like, oh, as a fan, as a fan, it's like just you got to have an allegiance like be proud of it like where i know oac has like the scarfs like they do in soccer like they need to sell that stuff own it and uh, you know am i in the media zone you know celebrating for certain people for empire elite for empire elite true new yorkers that we are yeah Yeah. new york's team yeah but so i i'm always pumped for atlanta track club and i'll go on and on at at another time about why but they ran great ali wilson you know she had ran 158 one um, yeah when she fell and when she fell and you know since then she had some uh sicknesses that she was dealing with but she looks strong shout out christy uh schofield, schofield which like we learned the proper pronunciation of her name boise state uh star who won the ncaa championships and we saw her kind of just walking through the mix zone and we we're just like hold on we, we want to talk to you and she's like really and it was like yeah, because it's like you're the NCAA And then I said champion. her name wrong, and she's like, uh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> we we, we corre- quickly corrected it, and you know, she was insightful in the fact that she was like, it's been a long season, and like maybe the expectation wasn't to get all the way through you know, NCAAs and then run the U.S. championships, but she's here and put, and, and moves on to the next round. So uh, look out for her. Could, could make some noise, like kind of got a personal best to win uh the ncaa title and now when you're going up against pros who knows what's possible so. are we ready to do picks or are we gonna wait one more round oh i think we gotta wait one more round okay yeah i'm not because like any I'll upset wake up. if so all right so i think the the narrative in the 800 is that it's like a clear three it's a clear three and it's like can sage olivia baker or ali wilson maybe even i, I was gonna say, say you're nia not Nickens. gonna name nia yeah i think those are the so it's a top three and then a really strong four that can crack it it's crackable I we think. should have had four spots yeah full all right next event women's 400 meter hurdles and so we're so used to you know, and we were kind of mentally prepared for this being another showdown between Dalila Muhammad and Sydney McLaughlin. But unfortunately, yesterday was the day that Dalila Muhammad awkwardly 
had to do it at a press conference uh, announcing that she is not competing at the U.S. Championships because she's going to end up using uh, the waiver that USATF granted her to compete. You explained it earlier, but Sydney McLaughlin, I'm 54-11, fast time of the day, making it look easy. I mean, in fairness, it is easy for her. Yeah. It's 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 unfair because a few years ago, what 54-1 would get you in the world compared to now. Uh, it, it's, you know, the, the event is evolving very quickly. Now, in second place, Shamir Little. Yeah. I, I, I think she's coming around at the right time. Shamir. We got yeah. a lot of things I to say about Shamir. I hope it's good Shamir. things. We don't Great. talk it badly is. about Shamir no, on this it is podcast. Amazing things because <laughs> if you watch Shamir Little last year, 2021, there is no doubt that she should have made that team, but she had the unfortunate mishap of hitting a hurdle, which knocked her off the team. That girl was running. And if you watched her run the open 400 as well, absolutely insane. So she's also someone to look out for. I think she'll make her way on this team. She has the game face of no one is taking this from me. You cannot take it from me. And I, it's something that we were talking about before the recording of if she doesn't make the team, we will be really shocked. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny, though. You're talking about she's got the game face, but, like, I talked to her in the mix zone, and she's, like, the most bubbly person ever. Like, her eyes are so big and huge. She's always, like, so awesome to, like, talk to. I had a chat with her um, in December for a project I did for school. And to kind of go back to your point about her and her game face, like, she's been ready for this for a minute. Like, I remember her, you know, doing 400s for a while um, before she um, was doing, like, 400 hurdles outside and, like, she was taking no prisoners. So like you were saying, like in 2021, when it didn't happen, it was like, what's going on? But, you know, I think she's got a great chance of making this team this year. Like she she's not playing around. Undisputed best Twitter in the game. No. Oh, disagree. Oh, oh. oh disagree. that was a hard. Now, no. listen, I, I, love I, Shamir. I personally think Shamir has a strong Twitter, but I, I'm, but I'm, we, I'm we, starting to turn. Yeah, we we gave our award to T.T. Terry today for um, best track account on Twitter wow. because this title girl, you used to own, Kyle. She's always yeah. on both sides of the coin. Like, she was literally at the meet in Florida about to compete and literally tweeting the whole time. She covers. So I'm talking to her, and I'm like, dude, what's that about? She's she better like, apply to Magic Boost next year. <laughs> we got to get T.T. <laughs> Terry on Magic Boost. But she has yeah, fans. It, it's crazy because she's like, well, for me, I always know that people can't watch the events. So, like, why not just, like, leave that open for them? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tweet about it. So, yeah. That's like Jasmine having two credentials. <laughs> you can go Major anywhere James. in this stadium. Literally, Two as soon as I'm Jesus. done, as soon as I was done, walk behind, and now I'm in the mix zone. So I think that was a lot of fun for people to see that side. So I think TT might have a future over here. Well, so TT yeah. Terry, join Magic Boost if you hear this. <laughs> so <laughs> Kyle, is it weird? Was it? Yeah, this is, I guess, just for Dana too. I mean, a, a U.S. Championship being on the other side of things a little weird. No, you know, it's. Um, it's more comfortable. There's snacks on this side. Yeah. Um, I did have a waffle in the stadium today. Yeah. And I have to say it was pretty good. But so it, not it, that bad. It's fun. I mean, cause you know, specifically like you guys are still competing. I'm, I've only been out of the game recently. We know them personally, like the athletes that we're talking to a lot of the time. And so I think like when you have those conversations off the track and out of the media zone, it's like, no, these are like phone conversations, text conversations. Like you're aware of what's happening in their life. And then you can in, like enlighten the rest of the world on some of that stuff. I absolutely agree with that. I think that it brings a completely different energy when you already have that connection with them. And so they're more willing to talk to you and, and be truthful. Yeah. So th we were just talking about the possibility of like Shamir little, can she make the team or not? That fourth heat, Anna Cockrell got beat by Britton Wilson. And I am so impressed by Britton Wilson. Ever since that oh, SEC meet. Oh, she's got to be meet, the strongest, per like, not even strongest athlete in the NCAA, the strongest athlete right now. Because what she did at SECs was nuts. And I just wonder, so at SECs, she ran the 400. She ran 51-2 in the prelims, 50.0 in the final. She ran 54-2 in the 400 hurdles. And then she ran 53-7 in the 400 hurdle finals. And then ran i believe a 48 split on the four she by did. four after all of that yes so some of that was all within like less than two hours how and then you know she comes back and she's our ncaa champ and also you know ran the four by four there 
how exhausted are these college athletes? And you talk, you know? ex- yeah, you want to talk about exhaustion. Anna Hall absolutely demolishing that heptathlon 400 hurdle, like double. What was that about? No, real question is, why was Anna Hall in the long jump this week? Well, so I yeah, I briefly spoke to her in the mix zone, and I was like, so what is this? One of like <laughs> five events this weekend? And she's like, actually, she was down for three. It was long jump. 100 hurdles and uh, the high jump. She's going to end up scratching the high jump. Uh, did the long jump today. And so she'll do the 100 hurdles. And she already is in. She's world. got her spot. Yeah, but I mean, Ashton used to run the 400 hurdles for to, to improve. And so, uh, it's you know, these college athletes are just built different nowadays. So long jump. You know, we had our correspondent down on the field Jasmine, what do we see out there? I know that you were upset you didn't make the final yourself, but tell us about how you (laughs) felt out there. Like, how did your day go? Well, my day was quite fun, I will say. I think that the ladies brought the energy, which doesn't happen often. We usually bring some type of energy, but today just felt very different. Um, Me personally, I still am very happy with the day, even though I'm – Obviously, a little disappointed about not making the team, but I had some great jumps in there with small fouls. Um, So we just keep progressing. But while I was down there, like I said, the energy of the ladies, and I think it was very nice. It was great for the college girls to kind of see what it's like on the other side and that you can have fun in this sport. Um, Quanisha, jumping seven meters. I think phenomenal i'm excited to see where she goes i'm kind of sad that it wasn't win legal but i know she's got it in her i think she may actually have that possibility of coming out with a medal um i think on the other end our our kind of sad one was tara scratching Mm -hmm. all three jumps um also tara not not tara or any other words because she does not like it um (laughs) Tara Davis, but she, beautiful soul. She still held her composure together. She's really excited to continue going. And so I think it was a great competition to see what happened. How, there. so I know that the, the foul rules kind of changed a little bit. Like how close, like, is that making a big difference now these days? Like they're like, if you come over the top, it's now a foul. Makes a big difference because if that was not the rule, I definitely would have made it into that final. Really? really? That yeah. close? Protest. Change the rule. Talk to about this. Yeah. Exactly. All right, David Mel, you can go? tweet about the, the, yes. the long jump rule change for us. But, Caitlin, you have some insights into – you spoke yeah. with Tara. She couldn't walk last week? Yeah, so she couldn't walk last week. So if some of you know from her um, Instagram account, she had mentioned about how she was having knee problems, and she's like, I'm just happy to be here because I couldn't walk. And I'm like – Girl, what are you doing out here? Like, shouldn't you be resting? And she's just like, biggest smile on her face, absolute sweetheart. But um, yeah, the girl had a serious injury, but she's still out here giving us some love in the sport. Her TikTok does give a little insight scoops. So if you do really? want to follow a yes. unfiltered version of Tara, she was, you know, talking about how high, how high gas prices were on the way to her PT appointments. <laughs> so really was trying to keep it together. And I, I was right there behind all the athletes. And she was like, I tried. I got out here and I tried to do it. And that's all I can ask for. Honestly, she's excited to go home and sleep is what she told me. <laughs> she she's phenomenal. She's been battling this knee since Mount Sac. Oh, so and before so pre it, it was way before pre she came out to Chula Vista. She was supposed to compete in Chula Vista, but actually felt her knee bothering her. And she literally, after she did her shakeout was looking for flights to go home She posted it on her Instagram story. If you follow her, you saw that. And I sent her a message because I didn't think that she was leaving that fast. And she sent me a picture on the plane. Like, yeah, girl, got to go. Got to get this fixed. So um, I am glad to see her out competing. And I'm happy that she was able to make it out. And then in second place was our NCAA champ from Florida, Jasmine Moore. Who, is she going to win the Barrowman? Is that? I mean, at this point. I don't know, but she's definitely going to be the three semifinalists. And if she's not, we got to riot. She'll be a semifinalist <laughs> yeah. for sure. Winning is, it's a little hard. Well, it's like the Gators are hurting each other in that sense. It's like you split votes between like Anna and, and, and Jasmine. Jasmine. And then like, I don't know. They could even have like probably a third finalist. Talitha? 
Like I don't I don't think so. Only because and there's so many I, other people. I mean, Abby so Steiner, yeah. Cameron, yeah. Cameron oh, yeah, has. Right, Cameron Rod. So I know a lot of people have been talking about like the sprints and stuff, but Cameron literally has all top ten marks <laughs> in the hammer throw. And we're big throws guys. So. Like that's like that's that's insane. I know everyone else, you know, might have one collegiate record or whatever, but Cameron Rogers' name is literally all ten names on the top ten list. Like, how do you compete with that? It's pretty baller. So kind of to just look at the top three here jasmine maybe you can help us kind of figure this out no one has the world championship or jasmine has the world championship standard so she's set quinesha does not but has been competing at multiple diamond leagues so far this season and so her world ranking is pretty high so she's pretty assured of a spot and then in third was tiffany flynn who's jumped a season's best today of 6.69 meters, but right behind her was Monet Nichols, who's uh, jumped 6.58 today, and she has the standard. So is Monet going to go over Tiffany most likely? So as far as I'm concerned, I believe it's actually within the top 30, if I'm not mistaken, um, in your world ranking, yeah. and Tiffany is in the top 30. So Tiffany right. will be going oh, to okay. world champs Um which is unfortunate for Monet because she's had such a phenomenal season, but what a way to end your collegiate season. But I kind of like it when it's like that, when it's the top three get to go. Because yeah. we go through this whole effort of having USAs and being the top three and being cutthroat, and I find it very confusing for the fans and myself yeah. personally when someone with the world championship standard gets down the line. You know, I'm thinking about Natasha Rogers here back in 2012. Yeah. You know, it's like number seven shouldn't go. Should be well, top three. Well, the other thing is, I, it was another, that was so funny last summer when it was... Uh, Craig Engels going on the uh, part of my take and having to explain them is like, well, based on the rankings, they're like, what are you talking about? It's too Just, confusing. So you got to make it easy the for the viewers. Too? So yes, yes. Uh, yes. it happened it in did. the high jump last year. There was a lot of people that were pissed off about that. Are we ready to talk about the women's one hundred? What a this is just it. never Great. here. Never, day. not super entertaining, the 100. Well, we have to start with, you know, a friend of the pod who we got to speak to earlier in the day. Kind of forgot that she was racing in the afternoon. Aaliyah just rolling up. Aaliyah casual. Hobbs. Aaliyah Jogged Hobbs. the 1088. Like, we got a chance to talk to her earlier today. And I was like, you know, what's that confidence like looking like going into today? And she's like, it's fine. Like, I'm, I'm good. I love w watching some of Aaliyah Hobbs' interviews because she's, you know, very short, but it's uh, that's her. Like, in, t in her answers, it's, she's just very confident. I was like, yeah, I mean, I ran fast. That's my job. Like, great. <laughs> How's the confidence? Good. How would you feel about your race? I thought it was pretty good. And it was like, all right. Wouldn't you Go feel good if you ran 10-8 looking yeah, that good? Her top-end speed looked unreal Legs today. would be feeling good. Yeah, that's Coming right. Coming off a win in New York as well, I said to Willie, I was like, hey, you looked great in New York. She's like, yeah, it felt great. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, it, that's all. I think that's one thing about those LSU girls, though. That top-end speed, it's insane. So... Aliyah's ready to roll, especially jogging. A so, and talk oh. about redemption, though. Redemption from store year, from last yeah. year. Coming in, was a heartbreaking fourth. Yeah. And all the stuff that happened with, like, the false starting and whatever. Yeah. So. Can we not fail to mention that? Because I will say, as a 100-meter runner, that will mess your mind up so much to be disqualified and then be told, oh, no, actually, you're going to run and so not be able to warm up. She, I think she warmed up like five or ten minutes prior to running. So absolutely amazing comeback story for her. So we, we got to, Caitlin and I got to hang out with Aaliyah Hobbs earlier today at the Adidas Hospitality Street, and we were just kind of like, so what do you do like when you're hanging around? She's like, I watch a lot of like – Family Feud, and I was no like, "No way!" Like Reruns on a Family like, Feud. Like a it's actually kind of like scary. A ton. She was like, <laughs> and anyway, we asked her, like, who would be, like, give you three other pro runners? Who would be on your Family Feud team? She's like, okay, easy. It was Shakira was one. Shakira was like the first name. She was like Shakira to have to be part of it. Like, that's we'll, her girl. Don't worry, guys. We're gonna talk about Shakira very soon. Uh, who was the second one? Fred Curley. Well, Fred Curley was a suggestion I had for her. I was like, Fred would be good. And she was like, yeah, I guess he would be good. I was like, because Fred is good at anything he sets his mind to. <laughs> Who's the third? I'm trying to remember. It's on my head. I forgot the third. It's right. going to come back to We me. surveyed the back. 100 people of what the hardest event in track and field is. And they said. <laughs> yes. 400 hurdles. <laughs> 
All right. That sounds right. <laughs> Are we ready to talk about the biggest shocker in that in the in the what sheet was it? It was in the third heat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shakari Richardson. It's all over Twitter. Shakari Richardson runs eleven thirty one, finishes fifth in the heat. It's not like it was the fastest heat of the day. In fact, it was I think it was the slowest heat. It was heat the of slowest day. heat of the day. And that means she's not doing the 100 at the world championship yeah well she, well she will be back for the 200 so she still got a chance that she looked good in her 200 out in new york so but it's just uh, the 200 is a whole nother animal at this meet That's like deep. i mean to try and yeah, make that you got team. abby who's you know she didn't abby was like i didn't even expect to run 21 8 i thought it was going to be like a smooth 21 9 so you know if she keeps that up and you got an olympic bronze medalist gabby, gabby. Thomas. You got, and you, you have you got a navy you too, who made the team last year on the olympics you so. can't discount jenna prandini not, being at at Hayward. not at all not at hayward not at hayward <laughs> well she, you know she finished second in that heat but she carried you know she got out slow uh, you know, and I, I thought maybe you sit in the bo- the blocks a little bit, you know, the first round. When you look at how many rounds you have to go through before winning a world championship, it's like that first one, you know, you wait to hear the gun. But she, uh, her top end speed just didn't look like it was what we s- saw earlier this season, yeah. let alone last season. She didn't look as sharp. And honestly, it was really shocking because she's had races, a lot of races where she's had terrible starts. And she and always her top strong. end yeah. speed does come in and she handles her business, but it's also shocking because her training partners ran pretty well and made it in yeah. advanced on through. So because you would happened. kind of expect, you know, if there was something in training that was a gaff, yeah, you know, then everyone would is I'm j- I, well, I'm thinking a little bit more about the the pre classic hundred, the one that where she finished last two, and then like Jamaica swept the top three spots and how that whole thing blew up and how she mailed that one in. Cause as soon as she knew she was done, she was, she just jogged it in today. Like Jasmine, I'm curious as someone who's run the hundred at this high of a level, is there a point in the race? Do you think where you mentally know you've lost or won? And that's just like, she's done it before that she's quit in the race and you can see it. Like, is that a thing? Yeah, I would say that I felt that she gave up about forty meters out coming yeah. into that line. It was pretty. It was pretty evident, I think. So no, no, she carrying the hundred and like it's a shame. People love to you know whether you're rooting for her, or rooting against her. Like as a fan of the sport, she is great for the sport. Yes, we're talking Especially good for the sport. We're talking today. bad for the sport. She is great for the sport. Yes. Yeah, she's It'll bringing spicing it up. She brings the personality. I mean. Look, like we posted a video of her on CDS because we were excited, obviously, to do an interview with her but afterwards. She didn't stop. But she didn't stop. And, you know, that video was posted. I mean, thousands and thousands of views. 50,000 as of this recording right now. 88,000. Jeez. Oh, wow. Well, well so 30 k <laughs> since we've been well, setting this up. The other thing, too, is just sort of like there, there's heroes and there's villains in the sport, right? Like that's how people, you know, blew up the Bolt Gatlin years ago. And for some reason, like the Jamaica versus Shikari thing has not cooled off whatsoever. Not on Twitter. Online. Actually, probably blown up a lot more today after what it happened. has. And so, in that sense, like the Jamaican trials are happening as we speak. Yes. And this is Shelly champs. Ann this is champs chat. So let's talk about the Jamaican champs. In that it's sense. a like, very vague <laughs> use of the word champs. Are we the champs? Yeah, we're the champs <laughs> chatting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, what did you ran ten seven zero in the yeah. first round, and like. We're not going to get the clash again, and like that's it's fine. But they're soaking in this moment. They saw the results at the same exact time that we did. They they got you know they were on Twitter as well, and so people like I don't know. I feel like the fans in the Caribbean are reveling in sort of the U.S. not being at the, like its top star and not having its moment. Well, the thing about this hundred field, and you know, it's deep. As, I still think it's going to be really. It's good. super deep. And when you're looking at who could make this team, it was wide open from the very beginning. Right? Yeah, anybody's game. Jasmine, how many people were under 12? I mean, 11. under 11? 13 women came into this meet running a sub-11. So it's not like it's wide open because it's slow. No. At you all. Know? That is a very, very fast 100. A lot of people <laughs> have been saying, just in general, track and field has been elevating in. This 100-meter field is a perfect example of that. Well, so here's what I was, like, thinking. Because I, 
when there's so much happening in the mix zone and you're not able to watch so much of these races, you lose track of like, did that person make it? Like, I got to check the results. And so when you don't see someone, like I'm looking right now at the results and I, in the top seven, I don't see the name Tiana Daniels. And I remember like last year, she ran Tanian one at the pre-classic and, made, and she was on the Olympic team. Only American woman to make the final at the Tokyo Olympics. I'm like, where is she? She finished back down in ninth today. But I still don't think that rules her out of making the team. Same oh, thing completely. with Brittany Brown sitting in tenth today. Like she's yeah, got that wind eight to ten. Like ninth and tenth is a little confusing though. Right. It's not by heat. Yeah. It's just no, no, like overall, by overall, like overall. The time of the day. Right. But I think the biggest thing here, especially for sprinters, is just survive in advance. Doesn't yeah. matter how you get in, you survive in advance. And I didn't get to watch specifically Tiana, but does she have the big Q or the little Q? She got a big Q. Uh, big, Q, big Q, which means she was probably just focused on coming in that top three. In that she was Q. in the outside lane, too. I feel like she had a pretty good visual of what was going on in the field. Yeah. Can we talk about the Q, big Q? Just because I know that there, this is, I feel like we always try to make this an introduction for maybe fans who aren't familiar with the sport so much. So big Q means you got automatic qualifier. Little Q meaning you got in on time. In the 100, it was top three, get big Qs. And then the next... Three. Next three fastest. Four. Next four. four. Next four. Get so just I, and every race again, like because I know my mom is listening to this, and at one point I would have had to explain this to her. She now gets it, but so every race, depending on the field size and whatnot, and the event would have different breakdown of big cues versus little cues. There'll be one person who's like, "Thanks for explaining what you're talking about." Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <We're here. laughs> All right, men's hundred. Wait, can I do an honorable mention of yeah. the hundred? I just need to give an honorable mention to Murray Beth Stamp Price. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. let's talk about because it. Because she has had a phenomenal comeback season, but it's not like she's just now coming back. She started coming back last year. Um, she is a medalist in the 60 from Worlds this year. I think bronze medalist, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, bronze or silver. Yep, bronze. 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 And she's been hitting her PB of running – Sub 11 this year. It's our first time breaking 11 seconds. And so I'm excited to see where this leads her. Also unsponsored athlete. Um, so super excited to see where this leads her. That's actually Ray's take. Shout out Ray if you're listening to this. Uh, has her making the team in his predictions. Wow. Yes. So look she's out for her me, in the next She's round. reminding me a lot of Brittany Brown about how it literally took Brittany going all the way to Worlds and getting silver before she got signed. So... I mean, it would suck that it would have to take that much for Mary Beth to actually get a contract. But, you know, if you never know. We might have a another something like that happening. Well, so on to the men's heat one, Trayvon Brumel. Oh, my goodness. It was <laughs> absurd. He's had so much time to celebrate. I feel like the last few races I've watched him run. And he just dominated this one from the get go again. You know, you don't celebrate a first round, but he on seems TV. to be. Like just on another level he and peaking is the comeback right back king. Like that is that is his name. That is what he does. He doesn't die. He doesn't. He, doesn't. he just comes back like He's ten times harder. How many lives? Every yeah. single time. Definitely more than nine. Do you guys know all the injuries that this man has had? Yeah. You know every injury, Chris. Like, name them. Yeah. Yo, so you know every Trayvon Bromel injury. You can name everyone. You can phone a friend if you don't know this. It's actually a trivia question. It's, uh, <laughs> give me a, give me an operation board yeah. and I'll point yeah. to the injuries. <laughs> Um, no, it is, it is crazy, Jack. Like, just where, just how you've made, been able to make this comeback. The funniest thing he said in the mix zone today was not anything really like performance related because it's sort of like when these hundred guys, if they do stop in the mix zone, it's like, what are they going to talk about? Like, for between the first round and the semis and then the final, like, it's just for some guys, it's all business. Like, Fred. I mean, Curly, Wolf, we'll talk. are we ready to talk black. about? No, no, no. Fred me, just don't say Fred's name and not let us talk let, about him. <laughs> let, let me finish this quick thought on uh, Trayvon, where he's like, he was. Uh, they said, "Well, what, what would you change about the race?" And he's like, "My outfit." It was sort of like <laughs> his, he wore a speed suit today. It was the was only like, thing he brought. He, no, it was like it's it's a little tight, and he's like, and so he was like unzipping it. He's like, I I need to get out of this thing, and so and I said to him, I was like. Are the short shorts coming back? He was like, no. He's like, it's a different time in his life. That's a different time. He's like, I'm going to go back to wearing the, the half tights and all this stuff. I also wearing. feel that way. As someone who now wears shorts down to like his, the low thigh, Yeah, the short shorts, you know. 
he, back it, in the day. It was funny because he did say, he's like, I know all the high school kids out there who started wearing the short shorts because of me, but he's like, it's not that time. Keep them on their toes. Got to keep them on their toes. They'll, come, they'll make a comeback at some point. Yeah, right. they're going to be wearing speed suits that don't fit. Yeah, because of Fred. <laughs> well, Fred's fit. Fred's fit perfect. <laughs> Fred, 983. Don't change anything, Fred. World leading time. And if Fred listens to this. Personal best. Yeah, Fred is listening to this. Fred's an definitely, avid listener definitely. of the podcast. Um, I mean, he didn't have to do them like that. That was like, so that rude. Was, <laughs> I just feel as though if I was in that race, I I would have had to to stop before the finish line. I would have been done. He would have defeated me as soon as I saw him get out the blocks because his first you, 30 meters. He was jogging. That was Literally anyone who actually studies the hundred or runs the hundred, if you watch that race, it's so textbook that you could tell he was just getting through those motions, trying to get through that round. And it was just so smooth and relaxed. It made no sense. It was very Um, rude. So I would say, you know, the 983 is not surprising, um, mainly because he's been real consistent. Like the past couple of times he's ran the hundred, like he tweeted about, he'd be like, Oh, I'm kind of like in the same area, whatever. And then, Boom, he runs this. I guess my surprise the fact that it was in round one. But yeah, that 983 coming out of nowhere is not really out of nowhere. Imagine being fourth in that heat, Chris <laughs> Belcher. You are over a third of a second behind the race winner. Like in your mind, you're not making the, the next round. Is, is like, but he makes the next round. He ran a great race. You know, he makes the semis. And he ran 10 1. And 10 1's not slow. But like, imagine you're in the race and you're watching 10 1 versus 9 8, and you're just like, what am I supposed to do what with do this? I do? It's a great example of a little Q. Great yeah. example. <laughs> this is this is phase eight. Is that is that where we get closer to phase eight? Um, uh, burned right through the mix zone. Oh yeah, he All also business. did the move. Honestly, his was the most impressive because I would love to know the speed. I think yeah. he was at least running. Like and then he swan do- dove straight into the ice bath. It was like, he <laughs> <laughs> did a flip. <laughs> but to, to say something else about Fred, a lot of people are missing him in that 400. They want to see that 42 pretty soon. We gotta, he's not worried about it, though, no. because he's going back to where his roots are. His roots is he was a one-two guy in high school. He got moved up to the four in college, and he's right back down to the one, two, and he's loving it. So are you saying that he's not coming back, Jasmine? I'm not saying. Oh you God. never know. I Is mean, this a scoop? That, no. <laughs> Jasmine knows something we don't. That man, may, he whatever he puts his mind to, he will do. So if he wants to come back to the 400, I believe he will come back and run 42 seconds. If he wants to come out to long jump, because he also used to jump in high school. Oh, Talked man. about that, too. Um yeah, he can come out and jump, but I'm pretty sure he'd go eight meters. You just need to follow him on Twitter because that's where the scoop is. Because yeah. he will tell you what yeah. his next plan is. Exactly. Yeah. Or his next real estate deal because he's, yeah. involved, <laughs> he's involved in that too. Um, yeah, because you know after that it was sort of like uh, Trayvon was in the mix zone when the Fred race happened, and then when someone brought it up to him, it was like. Well, what do you think? Like, he just ran 9-8. It's always fun to break the news to people getting their interviews when yeah. someone else just and ran. Trayvon had, like, a really good answer where he was just sort of like, I'm not surprised. Like, Fred has run 9-8 before, so, like, I, good good for him. And it's, you can tell that these 100 guys don't want to let up the slightest sign of, like, acknowledging that the other guy is better than him. Because then I tried testing it on... Christian Coleman. Wow, you're out here playing mind games. And Chris. I was, and I was trying to play God. The, the 100 drama. So I said to Christian towards the end, as I was like, as the reigning world champion, kind of want like your expert assessment. Like, what has made Fred so good at the hundred? And he was like, blah 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 blah. And he goes, he's a he's a Swiss Army knife. He's like just a jack of all trades and like good at everything. He's a tough competitor. But then at the very end, he just has to add to it. But so am I. And it was like, okay, oh, all right. Yeah. So he's like, not, not, not giving. Like, yeah, I'm gonna give a compliment, give a compliment, but then remind you that, hey, listen, yeah, I've, I'm also good. Yeah. It's just that's that's the hundred guys. It's an, it's an these. Then what makes them so successful, I think, is that each one of them believes that they are going to be the best and winning. Well, on there. Something that's cool about Hayward, specifically in the hundred, is you it seems like it's always a really good tailwind, like always a a favorable legal tailwind, but Christian didn't get it for some reason. You know, Fred got that one and a half behind him, and then Christian had a 0.7 headwind. So, you know, the times 
from heat to heat, even a matter of a few minutes, completely yes. different. They, it changes. We were down at the long jump and we were just like, the wind is changing. What is happening? And I think that's one of the kind of fun parts about the hundred is you don't really know what way the wind is going. And I know there's some people that complain about it, but like, can't change the wind. Sorry. Where's Cravon Gillespie? In this? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Coleman through Bracey right with them. Elijah Hall Thompson uh, were the three big cues all right on top of each other. But then heat four, I want to talk about, who I think is the underdog of underdogs in the hundred. He's got to be the fastest unsponsored one in the field. Brandon Carnes, like no one is talking about him because he's a little bit older. You know, he's 27 and he's P his PB this year old. in, which sucks that it's old, but you know, like yeah, look, 28. 27 is not, but 27, point, 27 is not old with track runners, but like, for an unsponsored you're in a room full of like 27, 28 year olds. But when you're, when you're 27 and you're unsponsored and you're finding your own way to meet, like it's, you know, not everyone survives that long. It's in the sport, but he is now, he ran a hundred meter personal best. He ran nine, nine, two with a, a, you know, illegal wind in New York. He ran 20.0 for another personal best. Like this guy's on fire. And I didn't, I didn't even know who he was until New York, but he won heat four beat Kenny Bednarik. And then also, uh, uh, Williams. Is it Mika? Micah? I thought it was Micah. Mike. McKay. 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 No, why does no one say McKay? McKay? So he's on the Jasmine Todd redemption tour right now. Yes, he is. I've seen this story happen a few times, <laughs> me being myself, um, where he went to NCAAs and he didn't perform how he was supposed to because he false started. Um, but I think that that's kind of, he can use that to his advantage if he's really diligent on what he's doing and also and just kind of comes out here and has fun. I think a lot of the times athletes allow the pressure to get to him and I can say that that kind of happened to me. And if this story is pretty similar, I think if he's coming out here saying there is nothing to lose, he can definitely make this team. I mean, he's run the times to prove it. He has to be careful to not get DQ though, because his running yes. style is extremely unique and wide. Yes. I don't know if Very that's wide. a term in the sprints. So they call him the quad God. Like that's his nickname. That's his nickname. Quad the God? worst part yeah. was that during NCAs and RG3 said she was built like a bulldog. <laughs> hey rg3 friend of the pod he listens all i'm saying is it's 100 meters straight down I've, i'm the distance runner sitting between two sprinters so what do i know but he just drifted so far over i was like you're gonna impede someone and step on the line so i just think he's careful no i i definitely agree with that i think that's something that you need to watch out for because they will call those lines very quick hey quads don't lie Quads do not lie. They call me the quads. <laughs> Put that on a shirt, guys. Yeah, so quads good. don't lie. All right, we had another final. Show the quad. The next final, well, the, the final we have was the men's discus throw today. Andrew Evans for the win. Dallin Shirts finished second, personal best. Collegiate and, from BYU. And a third spot, the we, victory laps own. We sent it out today. Uh, Sam Mattis. Yeah, so... Mac, I know you spoke to Sam. Was it yesterday? Oh, that doesn't work. Uh, yeah, I talked to him a couple days ago. Yesterday, two days ago. Yeah, so we've lost track of time already. What did what did what did we take from that conversation right before going on and making this team? Uh, he's an awesome dude. Um, really like cerebral. I would. He's really similar to like Chris Bernard, who was a triple jumper that we also interviewed. Um, and I love talking to the throwers and jumpers about the feel of the sport. Or the event. It's mm. not necessarily a uh, just a strength or effort thing. And Chris likened triple jumping to skateboarding, where you're trying to master um, a trick. It's not about effort. It's about the feel of it. And when you have a really good feel of something, that's generally when things go well. And Sam had a very similar mindset uh, with discus throwing. He had a massive 68 meter throw earlier this season, which is the furthest throw by an American in over 10 years and 68 meters would medal in pretty much every global championship going back quite a long way. So he has a really high ceiling. Um, the whole field didn't throw very far today through like 60, what did it throw? 62, 63 meters. Um, and I think all of them are, are ready to throw quite a bit further than that at worlds. 
Big throws guy, Mac Fleet. Yeah. Thank you for that, Mac. Big throws guy. But also here's the plot twist of Brian Williams will actually be representing Team USA at World Champs because he has the standard. So it's Evans, Mattis, Williams. Yes. So one, Reggie three, Jager. five for those. I was going to say, Reg Jager's, uh is off the team and he was on the Olympic team. So yeah. that's a little bit of an upset as well. Disc yeah, definitely throw. an upset. He's been going through some some injuries, though. So I actually got to talk to him. Um, I had the pleasure of training with them down at the training center. And so I asked him how he felt about today. And he wasn't too disappointed. Obviously, that normal disappointment of, oh, I didn't make it on the team. But this is only his second competition after coming back from a couple injuries from the hip. So... Yeah, he's he's pretty happy about it. One last thing before we move on back to uh, s- some of the track events is I just want to call attention to the fact that, you know, w- we've got the very nice track club. We've got uh, just all these different types of track club names. I think the throws have some really awesome ones. I'm just scrolling through the results here. And one of them is uh, Garage Strength. Like I that, think that's, that's a sponsor. Really? It's a weightlifting a sponsor. sponsor. Okay, so well, I looked shout this out up to earlier. Garage Strength. Like you just got Big a little supporters free ad here, but the discus. but I like this one. Cord Ferguson representing Throw One with the numeral Deep Club. Throw One Deep Club. <laughs> I like that. That's one. awesome. We need to just like if we pulled up enough money, we're just gonna have someone representing Big Throws Guys Track Club next year. How much money does goal it require? We're gonna make it happen. All right, back to the track. We've got the men's 3K steeple first round. Kyle, break it down for us. Yeah, so he won uh, pretty honest from the get-go. And, you know, Daniel Mikowski ended up taking it in 823, but we're talking to Evan Jager after the fact because he still needs a lot of these guys, you know, have the world championship standard. But Evan, the the guy with the fastest personal best in the field. The American record holder. 823, just outside that world championship standard of 822, he said that he realized with 100 to go that maybe he can get it. And so he kind of, you know, kicked into it a little bit late and came up short. But, you know, still a really positive result. His fastest steeple since 2018. Which he laughed as soon as you brought that stat up to him. Yeah. Because it was like, yeah, I know. Like, Yeah, thanks for reminding me. (laughs) Um, But, you know, he's, he's run some good races, you know, I'm thinking of like that 5k indoors that he had. So he's definitely been fit, but I'd imagine as a steeple chaser, if like name a worse event to have to do, if you've been dealing with injuries, like just completely brutal on the bottle on the body. And I'm sure hasn't been jumping barriers in practice super regularly. And a pretty crowded field as well. Everyone was together um, in heat one right until the end. So these were some crowded hurdles. And water jumps especially. So I was actually pretty surprised in the last 200 that we didn't see any falls. I feel like the trials, I just remember a lot of falls. Maybe the stakes are higher and they happen more in the final with tired legs. But, you know, everyone stayed on their feet, which I always really like to see because it's it's always really painful to me to watch an athlete lose their chance because of a fall, um, especially on that final water jump. I've just seen it too many times on Hayward Field. So I mean, I was I'm looking sort of at the first heat versus the second heat. The first heat actually, like with some of the names on paper, uh, looks like it could have been like the U.S. Championship final when you have Evan Jager, Hillary Bohr, Mason Furlick uh, going up against each other. These are guys who made the two last uh, Olympic teams. But then, like, you can't discount the second heat where you got Bernard Keeter who finished uh, second or, or third at last year's uh, trials. And then Travis Mahoney, your former training partner. So you got the chance to speak with Travis, who we also did a victory lap interview with uh, for the newsletter, where he set a personal best at 31. Yeah. Well, so here's the thing, uh, again, about the steeple. I know we were just saying that I, 27. I might get some flack for saying that 27 is old. Uh, but it was more in context. Um, it is. Um, but, you know, Travis... Being an older steeplechaser, steeplechasers don't age especially well. And it's tough. Like, I, you know, we're seeing Evan come back in the 5K this meet as well, likely, you know. Um, and I, I, that's kind of what happens is when you get a little bit older, falling, you know, five feet in the air, landing in an inch of water, like it hurts. That it's a painful event. And so um, to see Travis running super well, you know, is exciting for me personally as a friend, but more so something that, you know, we were talking about is the, the four day championship versus the 10 day championship of like, 
the Olympic trials and world champs really spread out. And when we're here, things are right on top of each other. If you're doubling the 100 and 200, it's hard. Like you have a lot of races in a really short period of time. And another aspect of that is in the steeple, you only get one day in between a 3000 meter steeple chase. I didn't even know that they had rounds of the steeple chase. They shouldn't, you know, <laughs> <Because> like <laughs> that's that really is a hard race. So I think that's really insane and only a day to recover from that. Well, we can definitely do our prediction, but before we get there cuz I really want to do the prediction for this event especially, okay. we have to give a small shout out to Hillary Bohr for being an inter international traveler. You don't really see a lot of American steeplers doing the Diamond League circuit. Um Hillary competed in Doha back in May 13th and then did Rabat and Rome as well. So it's really kind of been on a different kind of competition level and it's been a lot faster races. So transitioning into my prediction contest, I think Hillary Bohr has, you know, had the highest level of racing. And so if Evan Jager needs that time and pushes it, Hillary has run some fast times this season. Yeah. I mean, Hillary is probably like the pick for the favorite, I think going into the final shout out Dan Mc, uh, Mikalski for running the fastest time of the first round, 823. He's sort of on a little bit of a redemption trip here because of last year he finished uh, fourth at the Olympic trials. And so, it's you know it this is a wide open race like mason Furlick had a little bit of a spill going into the final uh water jump and so we kind of laughed it off in the mix zone because he was like yeah i mean it was it was a close call he got lucky to to get through with it with a one of the big cues but uh do you have any man. bold picks like who's your third man on the team or who's no one seeing coming i think it will be Bohr, Furlick, Milikowski. Wow. Yeah. I think I gotta go. I'm gonna go Keter, Bohr, Trav. Ooh. All right, Kyle. Um, I you have too many friends in this. Yeah. Race. Well, I'll just pick <laughs> my three of my friends. Um, no, I you know I think you gotta put Bohr on the team. Just yeah, it, it's crazy not to. Um, I'm biased here, but I think Travis is going to make it. I I'm aware of what he's been doing. I think he's in the right place. And then I think Evan comes in third and the question will be whether or not it's fast enough. Oh, I can see a situation in which he, everyone knowing that he needs the time says, all right, you do it. Mm. Wow. Which is really great. Do you think you could see a situation where like, we you someone asked him is like will you go out and lead it and he's like no I'm not he's yeah, never he's, done he's that he's in a his second career. half leader so like knowing that everyone else can go into it with that game plan do they just let him go and see if he solos it the steeple's so unique though because there's an advantage and we like to leading unlike in other races yeah. you get that clear ground visibility and you can hurdle cleaner yeah you can see the ground what you're doing and so oftentimes you will find someone if there's ever a race in which you don't need the standard lining up at the u.s champs it's the 800 and the steeplechase all right let's move on to the 1500s because we're we made it an hour in now okay wow. and these were spicy so <laughs> man do men and women run the 1500 so differently but yet the same Every single championship. Why does this happen every single year? Well, I would say normally the women are way braver than the men. And, yeah. you know, the men, everyone just ran 339 or 340, it seems. The um, women had some heavy headers in the first heat. So maybe we should separate men. Let's yeah, we'll go men, men first. first. All right. So men's first heat. Fastest time of the day. Isaac Baston from Drake University, runs a personal best of 338.92. In, in the safe heat of heat three. So we got we to gotta rewind real quick and talk about the drama that happened. Immediately. Yes. Immediately heat one, men's 1500. You're looking at this start list and it's like, you play that game of, okay, um, three guys get an automatic qualifier. Who are they going to be? And you're looking at this heat and you go, all right, well, like, obviously, Yard and Goose, Cole Hawker get in right and then Two you probably Olympians. say like vince yadi yeah you you look at that just going through and jenkins waleed suleiman 
But but, but uh, the, you, in your mind, yeah. Cole is an absolute lock here. Yes, a hundred percent. And he looked to be a lock until the final what forty meters, and he just got a little. So Cole Hawker did a up. lot of the leading of this race, which is very bizarre to want to you know, unlike the steeplechase, not exactly the place you want to be. It's his home track. Maybe he's got a little too comfortable on Hayward Field. You know, if you're training here, you're working out here. Leading from I just leading from the front strategy in this was a strange decision, especially when he's known to have one of the best kicks in the field. But I mean, with Jared Nagus in there as well, it's like you can't rely on those laurels. But it was that last 200 of seeing him just kind of get faded out the back was a very unusual sight. But he so he finishes in sixth place, which is technically still qualifying he position. Was in the bubble position. He was the last one in. And, you know, 339.5 isn't, you know, it's not a joke of a time. And a lot of first rounds won't run that fast. And you see he too, Sam Prakel, he won in 340. So still, he makes it through safe so round alive. two. And so, you know, Prakel, Cooper actually was taking the lead at one point, pushing the pace. I don't know if he was even aware of he how wa- Cole had finished. He watched the final lap, he said. Okay. But it looked like Cooper knew that that Cole needed the time, so he was making it slow. That's what it looked like. It wasn't that slow it wasn't that though. Slow. He he looked was, like up he in was the front. trying. Yeah. They were all on top of each other. It was the most bunched up men's 1500. We gotta get Max take on this because there was the tactics in there. But I, you do have to just look out for yourself. You know, like Especially now that they're both pros, it's not like there's a team score or NCAA like you should line up and I mean, it's just how do I make it through? See how it all shakes out at the end. That Cooper would be like, "Yeah, I was trying to help him out." But then the third heat, I think, you know, you're looking and it's like, "All right, well, if we just get if, if we break three thirty nine, then we get six guys through." Which is funny, because, and we knock out the favorite. Yeah, there was uh, I won't say who another pro runner just kind of giddy watching in the third heat to see if it would happen and maybe that's just like the excitement brewing from like whoa this is going to be a big shocker but uh we joked around with matt wisner in when he was coming through in the mix zone we're just like we thought you would slow it down he's like i tried yeah yeah, you gotta lay down you gotta trip and just like lay across so the track yeah your boy so Josh Thompson ends up being the last guy in, right? Yeah, and you know Josh Thompson is a guy that has won U.S. title before, and has very much been in the mix of many many races here. And I think he's just starting to round out into fitness right now. So he's someone like when you're thinking of the last guy in, you're kind of oh non factors like yeah. not these bubble guys. So dangerous. Oh, you Josh don't want to let Josh Thompson in. Like, no. I'm sure someone else is like, oh, nice. Like, uh, Cole's not the last one in. It's like, you didn't get that much better of a draw getting Josh in. Okay. I'm looking at the clock right now. You have 30 seconds to talk about Johnny in three, two, one, go. Born in Seekonk, Massachusetts, Johnny Gregork Jr., son of John Gregork Sr., uh, Looked great. He so Johnny's in law school. I don't know um, if I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this, but top of his class right now. Mm, you know, okay. Okay, Johnny. Johnny's, that just Johnny's, got you another 15 smart. seconds. Johnny's right. doing all right in law school. Um, and uh, you know, when classes ended, he came out to Seattle and you know linked up with Prakel and Jenkins under Coach Andy Powell, and has just things are clicking. Shout out to Johnny. Yeah, things are – yeah, you know Johnny. Uh, you get 30 seconds as well to talk about Johnny. Um, but things are really, really clicking, and he looks like himself again. And when I say look, when he looks like himself, I'm talking about the guy who is the U.S.'s only world championship finalist uh, back in London. And oh, Your time is up. No, I'm kidding. You could finish the thought. He's going to win the damn thing. Whoa. Heard it here first. Kyle Merber predicts Johnny Regork <laughs> is going to win the 2022 U.S. title. No, no. World Championships. Oh. Big Johnny fan. <laughs> he said what he this said. This is the champs chat. <laughs> champs chat. <laughs> what champs? Go big or go home. <laughs> all right. But in all seriousness, Johnny looks good. 
Johnny looked fantastic. Yeah. Women's 15. Women's 15, first heat, heavy hitters in it. And really felt like a, a final, I would say, in a way. It was, this is a hard one for me. It was really uncomfortable for me personally to watch. I was like, I've got too many friends in this one. And I was really happy to see Heather hold her own. Not a messy heat, very clean. Ended up being the fastest heat of the day, which is surprising. It was relatively slow overall. Um, but Heather McLean comes in at 407.96, nipping teammate Ellie St. Pierre in front of her, and then Helen Schlachtenhofen coming through as well. And Helen's someone who, again, is another one of those sneaky, dangerous athletes. Uh, I don't think Helen's really proven herself at the senior level on his championship race. So this might be the year really had some great performances at the Olympic trials. So it's definitely someone to watch out for. And then we had all three little cues from that same first heat with Emily McKay, the newest New Balance Boston. Yeah. Oh, Chinese that's official. Official, that's official racing the kit. kit. She's a Binghamton athlete. So um, Mark Coogan loves those local hardy New Englanders. So it fits the bill as well. But she got a PB today. So that's a good. Big PB. Big PB starting the meet off right. And then Danny Jones and Lauren Gregory in that heat as well. And then um, Julie Haymach, Hay Haymach from Stanford just signed with the Brooks Beast as well. So that was another. We had two little fun. I always like it when people show up in a new kit at USA's. DN DNS by Elise Cranny. So that means she's throwing all her chips into the 5K. Do we, th like, you know, just not about usatf or us champs specifically but just like the announcement like when everyone is announcing things at once i feel like things get lost uh -huh. yeah yeah and especially if you don't make it to the next round it's like i think you know an announcement when you do really well it works yeah but if you're trying to shove it in it's like this is a big news day you're gonna get lost but like on announced for huge signings in the week leading up to two days ago they give themselves enough space but media moves fast so the, but then to, to, for anyone else to announce anything around that it's like yeah no it's tricky. you kind of have to make your own buzz though now as an athlete you can't be reliant on the brands you have to you know yeah. hire a photographer make your training announcement and yeah. didn't really also people. feel like they shouldn't just all be on them too like I don't know. That's a lot of problems in tracking. That's field, on us. I, I did get us it. on this couch. Like we gotta, that, we gotta elevate the athletes. That's hundred percent another problem that I, we're gonna need a lot more hours for than this podcast. The, yeah. Chris the, was like, "We're gonna do forty-five minutes to an hour." About yeah, to we're a little over right now. A little over, over that. So, All right. uh, no, really funny thing when we're talking about the new athletes and their kids. Uh, I said to Yared Nagus as he was leaving, I was like, "Kid looks pretty good," and he was like, "Yeah," he was like. Couple little nip slips, but uh, <laughs> but I'll get one that fits. No, that's soon. that's on purpose. Yeah, they I think that so. in. Um, back to sort of this, like I'm looking at the results, kind of as we're you know kind of going over these. It was funny to I was standing next to Ellie when she was watching the final heat go through, and so she sees the results. And it's like four fourteen for Sinclair, and then four ten for Corey. And she's like, "Dang!" She's like, "Why did we run so fast <laughs> in the first heat?" And it's like. You're mad about that? And she's like, uh, she's like, yeah, I mean, you kind of, I was like, I get it. Like, you probably wish, like, oh, I would have known and I could have slowed it down, but you can't leave anything to chance. What happens is because they ran so fast, and it's not even that fast for, you know, if you no. break broken four running seven, eight seconds slower, you know, relatively pedestrian compared to what you're capable of. But because they put that mark out there, then I feel like the other heats just say, all right, you can have it. Yeah. But the, then, then the second heat, I can't believe they let it go 414 slow. With two four flat women in this. St. Clair Johnson's been on a tear this season, knows she can run four flat. Krista Schweitzer ran four flat just two weeks ago at the Portland Track Fest. And Nikki Hiltz has been not as quick this season, but very tactically sound. They've in run championship 401. Races. Yeah. And so when you're looking at this heat, you know, you also have Michaela De Janeiro in it. Um, from Colorado, the indoor mile champ, and Danny Aragon, who had run 404. Christina Aragon was just third at NCAA's. Rebecca Mara was an Olympic trials finalist. So you're looking at this and you're saying, "This is the heat that should go fast." Yeah. I would. I know personally, if I was in this race, I would be worried about Sinclair's kick. I'd try to run that out of her. I don't know if I can close that hard. And then Carissa looked really solid. And I, the question around Carissa was sort of like, so are you still also going to do the 5K? And we got our own America's own little Stefan Hassan action going on right now because she was like, yeah, I'm going to 
try to make the team in the 1500 and then I'll come back and run the 5k and then she has her options to kind of balance out 10k 15 5k I mean yes they're, they're all really hard to make it's not a guarantee but she's going for it I don't need to look it up I can I can guarantee you no one has ever made the team in the 15 5 and 10k so we were walking back from the store and I know Chris's parents and I get a, hey, Dana. I'm like holding my ice cream. I'm like, how's it going? Did, how would you, what'd you think of Chris's race? Like, actually, uh, we didn't see it. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, our flight, uh, we didn't know she was doing the 1500 until just a few days ago. So we didn't schedule our flights to be able to make this race. Talk about pressure to make the final. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, mom and dad, you'll see. But she, 5K was in the plan all along. 1500 was the last minute decision. I think it's kind of a really great display of strength. I love seeing you know, Bowerman athletes come out and race a lot. That's been great to see. And just seeing good Carissa, for the sport. Yeah. <laughs> seeing Chris across the lot. Yeah. Good for the sport overall. It really is. And then I think the last heat, Corey McGee, after making the Olympic team last season has completely leveled up as an athlete, been going to a lot of diamond league, um, you know, championship level races, but extremely poised, got the job done. This is a business trip for her and Josette Norris has not been racing as much, but obviously um, made the world championship team in indoors this year um, in the 15. So, and Taryn Rawlings making it as well. Who's had been on Taryn. It was season. a great race for Taryn. I know she had a run a yeah. really strong 5k um, earlier this season as well. So uh, can do both. Really just to wrap this up before we get to, to the, the final events that we we're talking about uh, new, real quick, new bound sweep. Yes or no in the final. New Balance sweep? Did it happen last year? Chris or no. Schweizer? Yeah, Sinclair Johnson? Hard no. Yeah. Not happening. So it's not happening. It's not around. happening. Okay, I'm Sorry. just taking a, taking a temperature check of the room. I'm the, I'm the temperature is no. Okay. All right. Nice. We can edit this. We can edit this, obviously, when they sweep, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here we go. Final yeah. events of the day, the 400s. Well, we'll go through this really quick. The uh, women's 400 wide open. I mean, some of the... But, just, but I'm going to be a little biased. Open. Uh -oh. D3 supremacy over here. You know, you're listening to a former Ithaca athlete right here. I say Waitlin Jonathan is making the team despite not, um, you know, running too much this season. Because last year she was talking about, well, you know, I didn't really, really feel great going into Olympic trials. And what did she do? She made her way onto that team. I, it wouldn't shock me. I got the chance to chat with her in D.C. a couple months back. And she was very much like pushes like yeah last year when is the trials very quiet like unassuming and she's doing this same exact thing this time around um jade uh stepped her ended up running the fastest time of the day 5105 but right behind her Ro uh rosie effiong yeah 5117 nice bounce back after ncaa's yeah this the daughter of both of her parents were olympians from for nigeria no pressure no pressure no at all. Pressure. You know who else doesn't care about the pressure is Talitha, Talitha Diggs with the third fastest time. Talitha Diggs, when uh, I mentioned her, it's like, oh, like NCAA champ. You think that brings more eyeballs and like pressure on your back? Does it put a target on your back? She was like, I was born with a target on my back. So this is not, and, like nothing new. Damn, that's that's got to be on the shirt Talitha. because that's the coldest quote I heard all day. No, and then she explained to us like the Talithal, uh nickname. Talithal and she was like, oh, yeah. Cake. like She was like, that was uh, just what the, the people have been saying for years. And then it People, the people on the other side, the, the media were just like, you know, that's like the coolest nickname. And she was like, it is? And I was like, yeah, it is. And she was like, and I said to her, I said, you got to copyright that. And I was like, yeah, I should. And she's like, all right, you guys delete these clips. Like, Sidious <laughs> Mag, <laughs> NIL <laughs> deal to lethal. And then on the back of the shirt, Target. Oh. oh boom. In the works. Kyle Merber production. Bonfire yeah. tomorrow. Like Bonfire it. tomorrow. Yeah. I think that she has such an advantage just because she is a collegiate athlete. She has nothing to lose out here. So it's not like she's missing out on a immediate sponsorship. Like she's an on sponsored athlete that's been going for it. She's not missing out on the prize money. She just has to go out there and have fun. So I think that really raises her stakes of Taking it away, to be honest. All right, I mean, so she's already achieved so much this season, running sub fifty at NCAA's and being the champ. Yeah, she she's done a lot. The, the champ, the greatest of all time in this <laughs> event, or in the hundred, two hundred, four hundred USA. Oh, Allison okay. Felix, fifty two three, and wins her heat. Uh, is this like purely a business trip for her in a sense of just like just taking a care of business? Very of yes, yeah. I think she's just here for the love. Yeah. 
They she's, love her. All right. So if you were so fifty two three, yeah. I mean, Sydney's run faster over hurdles. Oh God, let's. You didn't have to put it like that. Why? It like Why? That. It was Why? the slowest. Was like, what? It was the put slowest. The target on the front. Oh, it was the slowest winning race, and this is my theory. Okay, but it's round. I wouldn't pass Allison. If I was racing her, I'd be like, no, you got this. Okay, You're wait, my hero. That's <laughs> actually valid, though, because... <laughs> Women have said that they would not be well racing against her, right? Yes. Then I feel it's like a hero. I would be like... like... But then we're not racing because... You're gonna let me win anyway. It's like I, you know, if an opportunity to dunk on Michael Jordan, I'd be like, no, thank you. Yeah, I feel like there there is that factor of some people being like, hey, it's Allison. I'm gonna let her have it, especially knowing that this is her like farewell tour. So it wouldn't surprise. I'm me glad you're here, Jasmine, because I know it's a little bit of a hot take. But <laughs> I mean, I, it's, oh, it's definitely fifty-two-three a hot three take. winning a heat. At, but this is the U.S. four hundred meter champs. Being it's just Allison that Felix, I think that that also kind of might have some people shaking in their boots. You're racing against Allison Felix, so that also could be a thing too. Just a little intimidation of. Allison's in here, and she's gonna go. It's deserved intimidation. She's earned <laughs> yes. it at this point, but. Yeah, sorry. It's and now how do you? It happens in the final. Like it's more amplified in the final, knowing like. I don't think anyone's gonna care in the final. That that's that's a complete every man for them. So for, it's it's like a first second round thing. Like it's like let her get to the final, and then now we'll we'll show her the business. Well, there. The thing is, is like she'll show up to the business. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> like the she'll girl, show up to the no, business. Meeting. Not the girl. Sorry, the woman, the goat is no joke. So, Quinera Hayes the person who beat her last year at the trials didn't make it through it's like it, this 400 is so crazy this year yeah Quinera has not been really racing this season we don't exactly know what's up with her but we kind of noted that was um, a big notable miss we also had you know Kendall Ellis doing her job as well so on to the next round yeah women's 400 wide open I don't know what to make of it right Allison now. Allison will make that team though Allison whether it's will a four by four team. or the open four Agreed. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they'll put her on the 4x4, four four, I think. She'll find a way to make that team. If there's one person that I have learned you do not doubt, it's Allison Felix. There you go. That's Miss Felix to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Men's 400 final event of the day. Michael Norman has been hitting the gym. Woo. He... Boy. <laughs> oh Speak goodness. on that, Jasmine. <laughs> Speak on that. We need to hear I feel like you have okay. something else to say. Oh, no, I mean, that man just runs really fast. That's all. (laughs) You know, it it, it has nothing to do with the fact that he's got really nice looking muscles. I mean, yeah, not at all. I thought he's been in the gym. (laughs) He looked good. No clue what you're talking about, Kyle. (laughs) Looking good out there, running fast. Real good. Yeah. How'd Randolph Ross look? Oh, he looked great. I, yeah, honest, he looks awesome. I honestly anticipated him to run a little bit faster, but he is a vet in this and he has been around. He's He's got the Olympics under his belt, so he knows what he's doing. Has Listen, he been in the gym? Of, oh, he's definitely been in the gym. Yeah. Michael's been in the gym. I think they've both <laughs> been in the gym. But, but speaking of Randolph, when he ran the 44 at um, NCAAs, he was like, oh my God, that was so bad. And everyone on Twitter was like, like, what are you talking about? And then he he tracks his statement. He's like, I guess 44 isn't slow. And I'm like, dude. So it's the guys from the Olympic team. Well, Norman and Ross, Cherry DNS. That was a little weird to see in the final heat. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Do we have any insight? No, no insight. I, he's here. Saw him. So not sure. Maybe an injury that kind of came up. Or that's the only thing I can really think of. Bernie Norwood got won his heat. Uh, Elijah Godwin. I won love his watching win. Elijah Godwin run. Why? He because he he runs kind of stiff, you know. And then you saw him open like the last thirty meters. He just like relaxed a little because he had it, you know, locked in at that point, and he just like dropped the arms and like relaxed a little bit, and it seemed like he went even faster. But Has he, he been hitting the gym. He's definitely he he he's got a nice bench press for sure, man. Four hundred final is gonna be fast. I think like I think Norman <laughs> is gonna do something really special. In Get the final. specific. What time do you think is gonna happen, Chris? Oh Ooh. man, I think forty 
three, I think it's gonna take the win. Yeah, that's yeah, specific. Yeah. Specific. 43. I mean, down to the to the hundreds. What's his PR right now? Well, you don't have to look that up. What do you feel in your heart? Yo, first number. Don't that pop- look at I the know what Jasmine's feeling in don't her heart. Wait, no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, his his out. his PR forty three forty five. I'm gonna go forty three six. Okay. Just off his PR. It's gonna be okay. hot this weekend. Just so we're. It's gonna yeah. It's gonna. Today be was the coolest hot, day. And at sprinters, we love heat for the most part. I've heard part. that. He's okay, but not also, like burning heat. That's not burning. Remember, it was a hundred degrees last year. Hundred seventeen. It, it <laughs> was handle no heat. It was a hundred degrees. Ninety. He's also is he still in California? Um, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure he's still in California. We're getting that weather. He's used to this weather, so. I'm gonna go with he might even PB. What? Whoa. Mm. Mm. Just gotta Not because he's been in the gym, take. right? <laughs> yeah. He's been in the gym and I think hot he'll take PB. for sure. <laughs> Emphasis on hot. All hot. Right. Yeah, hot. H O T. H A W T. Actually. Talk about it. You know, I think that's a different podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The day. Mag, <laughs> Mag, we need like the swipe right and left <laughs> graphics on screen. <laughs> All right. That, final or no final. Yeah, yeah. Yes. that's what we'd use it for. That's, that's how we get. day one of the U.S. championships. Tomorrow, day two, Friday, June 24th. Uh, the finals we have tomorrow are the men's long jump, the women's pole vault, the women's high jump, the men's shot put. Yes. Uh, the women's discus, the women's 100. And the men's 100. Uh, so it's going to be another spicy one tomorrow. It's going to be hot. Spicy. Now, the big question is, tomorrow, do we give the ladies the bigger couch or do we squeeze them again <laughs> on the this, two person? This, okay, this I feel as though. It's being spilled over here. So I feel as though we deserve the bigger couch because we're just that cool. So if you're listening to this right now on your favorite podcast player, we're also putting up the video to this podcast on our YouTube channel in case you want to put it on the TV as a pre or post uh, post game show or come back to it later on. Uh, enjoy it. We're, we're here to bring you guys all the insights all throughout U.S. Championship Weekend, interviews from, from the mix um, behind the scenes content, our analysis, our takes, our jokes. It's going to be a jam-packed weekend. And it's data. It's analytics. It's our opinions. It's... Yeah, Jokes. unfounded commentary, champs chat, Ch- champions. Chat. Well, we also started the day off, you know, just so right. You know, a little morning run, community run at the Adidas house. Come through, come find us. Grab a shirt if you're in town. If not, you know, we'll find a way to get you one. How many and shirts do we have left? We have not that many shirts left, which oh. I mean, collectors' items. Get them but we're gonna have to restock for for worlds. All right, last thing, of course, the show is brought to you by Adidas Running, the new Adios Pro Three came out today so check it out it's on sale now at adidas.com it's their latest super shoe they won a ton of major marathons last year with the adios pro this is the level up the next version up so check it out today adios pro 3 adidas.com go get your pair we'll see you guys tomorrow peace